people, uh, how people uh, got along. And as I said, if you, if you had no time or couldn't get it, uh, please uh, say so, so we understand. We understand that, uh, you know, life is uh, full of other commitments. So uh, don't don't feel like, oh, gee, you, I, I'm embarrassed because I didn't get to it. No, it, it's, we understand you're, uh, uh, you, you're able to put uh, a couple hours of your hard time uh, here tonight. Uh, and uh, I applaud uh, you on that. Uh, uh, if you have a chance to do the homework at some other time, uh, please do. Uh, I just want to get a sense of how uh, you know how many people got to it, how many people didn't get to it, if it was too hard for some, uh, if it was too easy for some, just to give this a, me a sense so I can I will try to ad address uh, uh, all the uh, people, not just uh, you know the people that have uh, nothing else to do but uh, program. Uh, we will try to address those people too, but. Uh, we understand that you, uh, you know, there could be uh, plenty of reasons why you couldn't get to it. But I just want to be sure that I have uh, uh, a, a proper indication of, uh, uh, you know, how, how many people did the homework, how many people uh, didn't, and so on. So I'll give another uh, seconds and we will uh, uh, start. Um, as I said, uh, anybody have any uh, uh, questions on programming Python, uh, please, uh, you know, ask. Okay. All right, I'm going to uh, end, end the, uh, the poll here and uh, I guess I can share the results. This is uh, seeing as a lot of people are busy, uh, but uh, and don't feel like you you have to you know if, uh, if for some reason you get around to thinking about doing it, you can certainly uh, look at the homework. I think a lot of the homework uh, uh, problems uh, uh, will would be fun to do. I had fun uh, doing them, uh, setting it up, and doing them. Um, Okay, I guess we need not, uh, we'll just say, okay, here we are. Uh, and uh, let's see, I shared the results, so I think we can get rid of that. Okay, um, now, uh, in regards to uh, our issues, now, uh, I will, I, I could ask the question, how many people uh, did how much of the uh, of project, the 20 questions, uh, but, but I'll just assume that uh, those uh, either uh, were too busy or uh, would like to see some. So I'm going to just uh, go quickly over the uh, first three iterations. But for right now, let's go back a little bit to um, sort of what we mean by iterations. Iterations are a way in a little a piece of the puzzle, a little piece of the uh, uh, task of uh, programming is a uh, uh, process which often takes a lot of time and a fair amount of uh, tries. Uh, and uh, even in a working uh, professional uh, arena, and actually especially in a professional arena, uh, you'll find yourself doing a piece of the puzzle and then adding to it. So one part of uh, sort of understanding and, and getting ready to do a, a, a program or uh, programming project is maybe to think about uh, how to address it. And we think about iterations, i.e. a little piece and then add it on. In fact, uh, our class project is sort of set up as seven iterations or seven small steps. Main thing is you want to think of the features usually for iterations. Uh, you're thinking about if you've got a big task at hand or a, a game or a, a process, uh, you want to think of the, the things that are going to make this uh, game or project uh, useful. Uh, generally, you want to prioritize those to uh, sort of give an order as to where you how to consider them. Uh, often, uh, a, a way is most to least uh, or easy to hard. Uh, different types of ordering, just mainly to, to put them all down. That's the main part. And to then build, get ready to build to each feature you're going to add. Um, 
Seriously, you want to think about a balance of Big Bang with a show it now. I, I, some feature might be very nice to have, but uh, might take a long time. And so you, you may want to uh, temper that idea of getting that in there. And then showing progress. And that progress, uh, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing program for money and, you're in, and you have a boss or bosses, uh, often a very, very important thing is to show progress because uh, a very, I've been in both sides of that situation and sometimes a very fearful thing for a boss is, gee, I, I haven't seen uh, a Joe uh, do anything on this program as is he totally lost? Is it, you know, it's, well, is this too hard for him? Well, uh, if you can show progress, one, it's good for you, if you're working for somebody, but also it's good for you because often you can get demoralized. Programming, like a lot, any complicated task, can be worrisome. I, you're saying, well, am I on the right track? Am I doing the right thing? Or, or what have you. So uh, showing progress is uh, a very good uh, thing to do. In fact, that's one of the reasons for uh, having iterations so that you can, you can segment the program into pieces and then do each piece uh, and, and get more and more. So uh, we talked about our, our 20 questions. Um, we just uh, to sort of give a sense of the iteration, the iterations we just I arbitrarily put together, I have uh, seven. And they're just the first just a loop, just asking a number and then printing a number. No extra stuff, just a very simple little thing. And uh, so on. So let's let's just uh, as a so mutual exercise. I'm going to show it, and uh, if you can, uh, you should try to program along with me. If you have a problem, uh, let me know because uh, you really want to get a little piece of the uh, experience of success, even if it's a small success. Well, first thing, of course, is we say we're going to make a. Uh, uh, iteration, our first iteration that just loops asking a number and prints that number. Uh, and I apologize for those who have uh, completed that, but you can still go ahead and uh, uh, try and do it again. And I think if you haven't, please try to do it along with the instructor. So remember we said you don't want to start with a blank sheet of paper, hardly ever. So in my case, I say, oh, recent files and remember, we created that my work file. It doesn't do anything except set up a file, get you access here to a file that's in your, your place, your work, or my, if you said my work, and then mywork.py is just a uh, empty file, except it has a comment at the beginning in a sort of format. We like to have the top line and, and maybe another comment line that's blank pretty much. So then, of course, we take and before we do anything else, we save as. And in our case, uh, let me just put it in a thing called my work. You can put it in. You should have a folder called my work. If you haven't, you can uh, create it. Uh, or you could just take the file that's where, where you have all the other examples you have. So uh, I'm just going to output, or at least I'm going to change the thing to, uh, we're going to say IT, since I already have something called iteration. So we're going to say IT for short for iteration, iteration or IT one. And of course, we're going to then change. No, we haven't done anything except create a file and store this in it. So now we're going to say, we're going to change the name IT1. And we're going to change the date to what is today's date? It's the 28th. And we're going to say uh, uh, 20 questions, uh, iteration one. All right. So there we are. We haven't done anything except get ready to uh, create the first iteration of our uh, program. Uh, and we create a file. 
Uh, we named it IT1, and we used a uh, my work as an example, but we stored it in uh, as a new name, IT underscore one dot PY. And then of course we changed the top line comment to have the, the actual name and actual date. And if we had any other changes, we just say, okay, we'll, we'll put the thing. So now we could, uh, now our uh, first thing is loop asking a number, print the number and it. Uh, we can, ah, uh, oops, I just, um, there we go. We will just uh, say, okay, uh, let's, uh, we'll loop asking a number. Well, remember, how do we make a loop? We while, and uh, our loop forever, And then we say we're going to loop asking a number. Remember, we have a built in function called input. We're going to store the result in a variable called INP, short for input. And we'll just uh, print. All right, so there we are. We wrote and we're going to run this file we created. We say run module. And of course, it says, oh, must save before running or checking. Uh, well, now we look up here just to be sure we haven't, we're not overwriting a, a file we uh, used as our template and we're not. So we say, okay. And it says enter number and we say, oh, four and five and six. And so, okay, so that, that uh, gives us now. All right, that's our iteration one. Anybody have any questions about that? Or not anybody not been able to do that? Now it's time to ask. Because if you haven't been able to do it, there's a good chance that somebody else hasn't been able to do it and they are too shy to ask. So now's your chance to help everybody, yourself and everybody else, and ask. Any questions? Any problems with that? Okay, so there we are. We have that. And we say, okay, now our second iteration. Uh, are we going to set the, now notice we should have put the, you know, uh, to be truly rigorous, we probably should have said, We just put our little uh, description there. And of course, we're going to say, we could say run just to see if we've broken anything here. We shouldn't have, but you never know. And into number three, four. Okay, so it looks good. And now, okay, so that's our iteration one. We added some commentary. And now we say, oh, we're going to do our second iteration. So what do we do? We don't start from scratch. We say, what's the closest thing we have? Well, the usually the closest thing you have in your iterative is your last iteration. In our case, it underscore one. So before we do anything else, we say save as, and we're going to save as. And sometimes when you're making changes, it's real easy because the name is almost there. So you just change it to it two, and you save. So there we did, it's sort of see IT2. And now before we do anything, and this is important because uh, at least the second thing, before we save it as a new file, now we save it as a new file 
before we sort of add more stuff, the first thing you want to do is IT2 and uh, maybe the commentary. Uh, and you could sometimes say, sometimes a simple comment is, this came from uh, the, the file you started with. And that's going to be very helpful when you're uh, making changes or adding things to things, because sometimes you get back and say, gee, hmm, where did this come from? And you'd like to be able to see that. OK, so here we are. Now, the first thing you want to do, of course, even before you do any coding, is you say, OK, let, let me write down here in my commentary. Now, notice uh, that you get tired of all these uh, if the thing, uh, you know, pound side, you can use this multi-line, what are called documentation or doc strings. And it just means that it's a doc string because it says multi-line string uh, with the three double quotes or three single quotes. Uh, but if it's not assigned to anything or not used, then the Python says, oh, this is just not a, this is a string that may be used for documentation. I'm not going to do anything with it uh, in particular, but it'll be available. Some tools actually use that. So now we say, okay, our iteration two, uh, what are we doing? We're set. Set target value and what is the other thing? Quit. Now, notice we haven't made the program do anything differently yet, but we have set ourselves up to uh, do something. And what's important is, um, you can do this. That's good practice to, to put commentary at the beginning if you're going to do something new because they're different. Uh, because then uh, you're set, and when you're in the middle of this coding and you're sweating, oh, what am I, where am I doing? What am I? You can go back here and say, oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And remember, this is a small example, but as you get bigger examples, this commentary can be as big as you like. And uh, in fact, some people can do the commentary, and then other people can do uh, the actual coding. So that's also a good way to uh, allow yourself. You can you can do your commentary and then come back to it and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. So uh, what do we say? The second is set the target value. So uh, in this case, we're going to say target. That's just a, I uh, would say 15. Uh, and we can commentary, we can put, uh, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's uh, there's a little thing, so I have to one, one space and I can tab over and I can say, okay, so then we say, okay, good target value for guessing. And obviously I could put this, thing in here while something, I, I could make a condition, but for right now, I think the while true is still useful because the often the, the while true doesn't mean you're gonna do it forever. It means uh, by and large, the, the decision for ending the loop is a little complicated and it won't fit in a single line or single place. So I'm just gonna put my infinite loop thing here and I will change my mind later on. We're set up to. So here's a case where, uh, okay, input is that's fine. However, and however, um, you're going to make a uh, test if, and uh, your number entered. Okay, so.
And now we use a thing that we have, I don't know whether we've talked about before, but it's a construct or keyword break. And that stops the loop, makes you stop the loop. So let's do this. There's a little problem here, but let's just try this program. And that's the nice thing about programming is often you can just try things a little bit, even before you know you're done. Uh, to see if you've um, break and are, are straight. So we're just going to do run. And of course, it's going to say, and what does it say? Enter number. So let's enter four. Um, okay, it says it's still going to ask me now why. Oh, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see, 15. And voila, things are not doing the way we expected here. Let's go back and take a look at what's going on. We're gonna input print as we do, and then we're gonna do inf equal equal target. And if that's the case, we're going to, if it's correct, we're going to uh, break. If not, we're just going to continue and let's see. INP equals inputs. Um, input equals, let's see. I think the problem here is when we said yeah, target is a number. Inf is a string because we get the characters from the keyboard. So I think what we have to do is we probably have to say guess equals we're going to use this built-in function int that converts the string that we got in, in and we stored it in, into an integer. And we're going to actually put that there. And then we're going to also change INP here, guess. And let's run it. And we come up, enter number. So four, two, 15. And your guess 15 is correct. The main problem is here is when you said, uh, if guess equal equal target and guess was a string, or uh, if was a string, uh, this comparison, of a string to a um, target uh, to a to an integer uh, won't uh, give you the, the arithmetic test that you want. In fact, if you had done uh, a arithmetic like uh, greater than or less than, you would have actually gotten an error uh, because when it's if you go back and look at the uh, you say, okay, we go back in our a little bit of uh, idle. Let's say target equals 15. Uh, int equals um, 15. Oop. The, if you do some arithmetic comparisons, which we will in the next uh, iteration, uh, it says uh, the greater than, if you will, sign is not supported between instances of string and int. So a good thing to do right away is to 
uh, convert your input to a uh, integer so that you can do comparison. All right, so that looks like it uh, does our what we did. It's oh wait, wait and it quit and, uh, and it quit when we uh, it quit the loop when our our guess was equal. Any questions? All right, so that's the second iteration. We just took the first iteration that just went in loop, and then we took the second iteration which uh, set a target value and then quit if the num quit looping if the number entered. Uh, equals the target. Uh, remember, now third iteration is we're going to say if the enter is greater than or less than or equal. So of course we take our iteration two, which is what we did so far, and we say okay, we're going to we're going to make another iteration, iteration three. So we're going to save as. And we're going to save it as it3, so we don't mess up the we some some flags. Uh, some files are called iteration, and so on. So it3.py, and there, notice if you look closely, it's uh, it3.py. And the first thing we do before we do any new things are we update the name. The date is same and we'll put a little marker saying uh, it's from IG2 and then of course we then do the next thing is we say okay let's um, uh, and what was our third edition? Okay, so now notice we, we've just, we've done a big uh, change here uh, as far as what we have. We've changed the name of the file to the new, we've updated the commentary and we've added uh, a new section for uh, what we're doing. So this reads as a nice little, if you look back and then just say, oh, oh, what does this iteration have? It has this and this and this, and that's a good way of keeping track uh, for yourself or for others. Uh, you know what's your what your program has done uh, so far. Okay, any any questions so far? Okay. All right. So we say um, okay. Uh, anybody? Well, what what do we have to do to to do this third uh, iteration? Uh, probably we need to write an if condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where where should we add, where should we write that if commission uh, if uh, let's let's uh, let me show line numbers. Okay, where do you think uh, uh, the if the new if conditions uh, should go? Uh. I will guess before 18. Yeah, that's a good guess. Anybody else have another choice? Okay, why don't we do that? Why don't we say, okay, we're gonna just add this. Uh, and we say, if, and you should be going along uh, if you can. Uh, uh, Okay, there's our first guess. Now, that's that we, 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 let's see. Uh, we, we print a little message. I can't spell. 
That doesn't look right. <laughs> okay, see, see uh, coding by uh, choosing uh, other words. Uh, okay, so um, we say, okay, so your guess is too low. We print it out and uh, and what should we do here? What, what do you think we should do here? Um, continue. We could do continue. And what does continue do? Um, continue the loop, like to add. It goes, yeah, it, it, it continues. It goes back to the, to the loop you're doing. Now, um, one could say, okay, we have, um, that's our test for too low. We who are too lazy to type uh, can say, okay, we will just do another test. And uh, notice, uh, okay, so let's see, too bad you just uh, continue. Let's see. And just for, um, okay, so we will run. And then enter uh, three. Oop, inbound literal. And face then, okay. So what did we do? Enter number, chase back, line number 16. Uh, int. Uh, let's try again, let's see. We're testing if it's less than target. Target is 15, guess is in, guess is too low. Let's try running this again. Run, enter number. So three. Ah, we maybe have, maybe we added a space in there someplace. <clears throat> Aha, uh -huh. okay, that doesn't look too bad. Um, any questions about that? Any, any suggestions? Uh, notice, um, you know, if you test, some people who are uh, abstract in mind might say, oh, gee, you tested for less, you tested for a greater than, you don't really need to test uh, for equal equal. You could just, if it, fails those two tests, it's got to be equal. What do you think? Anybody? In fact, you could just uh, try it out. Um, Comment those out, but to comment those out, we have to move that back there. And let's just see. Aha, uh -huh. sure enough. Now, I would tend to still put that test in. Excuse me? Yes. Um, so I got, I had to restart my computer uh -huh. and um, I haven't been let into the meeting. I'm Al. Let's see, you, you restarted your computer and you need to get back in the, uh, in the uh, meeting, right? It's all set now. Okay, uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. So here we, I like 
the facts. I like to put the explicit test for equality because for one, it allows me to, if I would like to, I can take this and move it as the first test, if I like, because I'm truly testing. It's a little redundant, but I think sometimes a little redundancy a uh, little overkill. Uh, sometimes it's uh, helpful because that way, it uh, uh, if for some reason you might want to do something special, if uh, you know these two tests fail, but you don't want to just test for uh, equality. So anyway, uh, there we have it. We have our uh, three uh, iterations. I think uh, for homework. Uh, there is a uh, uh, the fourth iteration, so I'll just leave that as an exercise at the moment. Uh, any any questions? Let's see. I think if I run, since I made a change, it's going to ask me. Notice I don't have to run it now. I could cancel because I'm in the, I want to change the the name for some reason. I didn't want to save it, so just keep that in mind. Uh, in this case, run. Okay, um, and uh, I guess I can, okay. Uh, any questions on this? So the, the next iteration will be just uh, take those and, and just take this and, and add this uh, next thing, um, set the target to a random number. Ray, I have a question about yes. the, uh, running it, is it possible to run only one through 16 or like some part of this, I want to call it syntax, but it's not really like this function we put together or every time we need to save as a new file if we want to run only some part of this? Yeah, I think the, the, um, the answer is uh, no, you, you, you have to, you, you, you have to run the whole file. I mean, there are there are some techniques. I mean, <coughs> one technique is you show you can, you know how we use multi lines here. One approach is let's say you only wanted to run uh, twenty six to twenty eight, or you 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 only want you didn't want to run eighteen to twenty four. You can. Put uh, you can comment out. Oh, I, and see. I, I, okay. I I use since double quotes I use a lot for saying triple quote uh, double quotes I use a lot for commentary. I usually save um, single quotes so that way if I commented out, I made this a string by commenting it out, if you will. Then if I run this, oh, where are we? Notice I didn't run this these portions. So uh, the only way I, I know of reasonably running only a piece of the line is to use this, this multi-line commenting feature. It's, it's not as uh, nice as I think you'd like, but uh, it's, it's not bad. Uh, often, if, if because what you want to do is you, you just want to take the last out, you know, then, then you can... Uh, 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 you know, makes it relatively easy. So that that that's what I would say. If you want to, uh, I think probably um, for most cases, uh, if you want to do pieces, you should save it as a, a file. You can save it. Remember, you can be pretty creative in the file names. You can say, you know, save as uh, and use the file name, and then you know, uh, underscore uh, a dot py and and you could just save a you know a piece of it but under a special name so uh that's that's what i would tend to uh, think if you want to play with uh, 
uh, pieces of the file. If you're if you're trying to find out what's going wrong and you want to take pieces of the file out, uh, that's often the best way is to save it under different names, because um, that way at least you're you're sure you you won't lose lose anything. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? So there we have our uh, iterations. Hopefully, it didn't. Uh, uh, take too long or, but I think uh, you really should try to do it because I think you'll get a, a kick out of making your, getting a little closer to your, your project goal. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, by the way, let's see, I think, this is some of uh, our last, uh, our last uh, week's uh, slide, uh, uh, session uh, two, just to give you a, a hint as to uh, what to do about the random, uh, num to use a random number. Uh, often uh, you, in, in Python, you want to find out something new, you search the internet using, you know, Google or such. And in this case, if you just want to do uh, random numbers, there's a, a, um, we have a module called random. And like anything in uh, Python, you can import random, which will input the whole module. Or if you want to just do a particular uh, piece or particular function, you can say from random import randint. And then this randint function is a uh, function that will give you a a uh, random number, a random integer between uh, two uh, places. For example, here is just a little bit more of some slides from last week, which we didn't get to, but uh, you know, look for Python and what you'll get is uh, from random import randint. And then if you do, then you can do, you can use randint by saying randint paren from the low end comma high end. Notice, Unlike the range function, which we covered a little bit uh, earlier, uh, this nine is really the top level. So this will give you the uh, uh, random uh, integers between one and nine. And you can try it out. But anyway, that's, that's where I, for your uh, homework uh, to do uh, your next uh, uh, iteration of adding, making your target a random number, you can use, uh, you know, from rand, from random import randint and then use randint uh, and pick a range. You'll probably want to say target high, target low equals, you know, something, something, and then it'll be a range between those. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So here we are. We're sort of at our uh, session three where we begin. Uh, we talked a little bit about functions last uh, week. Uh, anybody have any questions to um, about uh, functions? We talked a little bit about them. Uh, they're a way to uh, sort of compartmentalize some programming uh, that you want to use again and again. Uh, and uh, uh, back in the uh, day, there were lots of uh, uh, difficulties of how to make uh, uh, functions and then and, and how to how to add functions to a language uh, in by now in Python pretty straightforward. Uh, we notice remember we notice how to uh, name our function uh, and pass params. Anybody have a question of that? I'll just ask because I don't want to go over it again. If if nobody has uh, any uh, questions, but if you have a question about functions uh, and, and how to write them, uh, please um, unmute and ask. All right, okay. So now here's a little bit more, more about functions, sort of about the how and why. Uh, uh, we're gonna, essentially uh, look as an example of uh, uh, which we call friends and families uh, 
It's a, assume you have a, a, a database or a game that you wanna uh, use and it has, includes uh, friends. And so you need some utilities uh, and worker functions to uh, add new friends to the list, uh, list the friends you have, check if uh, something, somebody is a friend or not. And you wanna build up this uh, uh, tool so that you can use it again and again. So in fact, uh, we're gonna go over um, a sort of thing, building it up slowly. And if, I have, if you have any questions, uh, feel encouraged to uh, ask them. So in fact, you can, uh, if you wanna see the source, uh, you have the, um, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. I don't think I need to say that, okay. So uh, let's, Let's go and uh, in our case, I think I've looked at it recently. Um, uh, here we are in, in sort of your exercises, functions, uh, friends and family. There is a friends underscore one. All right, so you don't have to uh, do this, uh, Immediately, you don't have to know everything. We're going to go in detail over it. And uh, if you have a question, uh, stop me and uh, we'll go over it. So, notice this is just a file friends one, friends underscore one dot py. Uh, you notice that as a top line I harp about uh, putting in uh, the date, the user, and uh, why. And then, of course, we add a little bit uh, here. Uh, our first introduction to family and friends, i.e. Our, our, our samples. Uh, it's a simple demonstration of functions purpose, i.e. not just how to write them, but you know what you might use them for. Uh, we have a readme file. Oh, okay. I guess we just had to momentarily stop it. Sorry, Ray, that was, uh, I, I accidentally clicked on something by accident. No problem. Okay, so notice we, we have uh, uh, my friends is a list. Notice in the past we have a, a list as a uh, data, Python data type that allows you to have a ordered list of things. And the way you make an empty list is you just use square bracket and a close square bracket. If you have uh, friends, you put a comma separated or comma, if you have values, you just put inside that square brackets a comma separated uh, group. So uh, often, and this is a sort of style that I think is worth uh, commenting on. Uh, so the first function we use here to add as our very beginning is list friends, which is going to list friends. Now, by the way, uh, notice uh, we're defining a function using def uh, and then the name of the function. And because we like things to read, we often put a underscore if it means if there's sort of two names we want to, two words we want to stick together as one. So list friends. And then you'll find it again and again, if once you write a function or if you read other people's fun functions, right after the DEF name of the function, the parenthesized list of its parameters, if there are any, and then a colon is a comment, often multi-line, that just says what this function does. And we'll show you in more detail because there's a very uh, honored style that people use to give um, the readers of a function and the people who write it too, to, to help them remember uh, what the function does. So this is a function called list friends, and it is going to have a bit list friends. Now, uh, we set a variable nf, local variable to zero. That was short for a count of number of friends listed. We'll, we'll show you in a uh, minute why that is used, but we're just gonna set it to zero because we assume nobody's listed yet. And then to be uh, uh, verbose, we're going to print uh, friends colon just to let people know what we have here. And remember in print, there's this keyword function a keyword parameter called end, which says what the print is going to do at the end of 
the, the end of the list of things it types. The default is, of course, a new line at the end. But in this case, because we're going to put more than one thing on the line, we're going to print friends colon a space and nothing so far. And it's going to sit there. And then we're going to use our looping, our for loop, which takes in traverses, if you will, a list, my friends, and it lists, it loops through that list, making friend variable equal to each one of them. And then if it's going to, it's going to, if it finds one, when it finds one, it's going to print out that friend name because that's what you said to do. But because we like to make things look pretty, we're going to separate those listed friends with a comma. But of course, we're not going to put a comma at the very first one. We're going to just put it after the first one. And that's what this test here does. It says, ah, if there are more than zero listed so far, we're going to print comma space, still staying on the same line. And then whether or not we put the comma, we're going to print the friend and we're going to print it on the same line because we can use end equals quote, quote, which means we're not going to put anything after the print. And then, of course, because we printed, we're going to add one to NF. This plus equals is just a shorthand in, in Python. It's the same as NF equals NF plus one. It's just a shorthand, sugar coding, if you will, that allows you to do addition to a, a variable. Uh, short end. And then of course, after we've printed the list, we're gonna add a new line to end the list that we're printing. All right, so that's the, the function list friends. Any questions about that so far? And we use that first because that's often what you do uh, a lot of. And so you wanna have it almost available immediately. Now, uh, one thing after we building these functions and the list friends is the first one, we often good practice is to say, oh, let's write a test function to just test this. Doesn't have to do a lot, but just a little bit. So we're gonna, and often um, I like to just to show myself and others, we're gonna define a function called test underscore list friends. And by the way, it's going to test or at least exercise the list friends function. So we let ourselves know what we're doing. Ah, global my friends. It's something we haven't seen before, at least not too much. And what this says is the variable my friends is not just in this function here, it's global. And therefore, if we see it again, we're not going to define it. If we didn't say this global, my friends, then the next time we saw my friends, like here, it would say, oh, make here in this local function a new variable called my friend underscore friends. And that's not what we want to do. We want to say, oh, uh, my friends is global. Python, go look outside and find that my friends and, and, and operate on that. Then we're going to, our test is going to print an empty list by saying list friends, because we started out as an empty list. So we're going to, uh, no friends. So we're going to print that. And then the next test we're going to do is we're going to set new friends equal to a list of A, B, C. And then we're going to print new friends. And we're going to, just print this list to remind ourselves what we've done. Then we set my friends, which is the global, because we said so, to our list we just made here. And then we're going to call list friends. So this test that we're doing just does two things. One, it does, it calls list friends empty, and it calls list friends with a handful of values. So there's other things here, but we will just run this first test. And just looking at this piece here, this is our test. 
uh, notice it does a, a test list friends. And the backslash n just says that I wanted a space here, so I an empty line. And then it prints uh, at the empty test list, which of course shows nothing. So that's good. That's that shows us that we did it pretty good. And then we say uh, we made new friends, which is list of a b c. And then we're gonna call. We set new friends to that list, and then we print new friends. So this little test we did using this function here does a little test of our first function, our first function list friends, which we're going to use again and again. Uh, so it's nice thing about this thing is it gives us a little confidence that we uh, we did OK in uh, creating this function. And that's a good good practice, especially if you're going to do a lot of functions uh, that are going to be works workers, and maybe you don't get around to using them in the real program right away. If you do little tests functions to test those, you get a little better feel that you're you're maybe work, working uh, your program uh, functions uh, good. If that's, so, that's you know it doesn't say it does everything possible in the world free do but at least it said you did a couple things and you tested them and it seemed to work all right so that's our first uh, <coughs> notice our first function was only a list friends function which doesn't do too much in the world um, because we had to create these lists by hand if you will uh, and try it out so let's say, well, the next thing you might want to have in your database building thing is you want to have a function that adds friends to your list, because that's, of course, what a uh, game or a um, database would do. It'd be you want to add new friends as you find them. So uh, our, we add our add one friend. We could have put these in different files, but for right now, we said that we did small enough. We'll just keep them both in the same file. For, the, so we're going to define add one friend, and it takes as a parameter the friend to add. And here we have our commentary, multi-line. And we say, oh, the first part of this comment is it adds one friend to our list. So even if you don't know much, even if you don't look at the code down here, at least you know what the, the author intended. And then another thing you'll find, and this is a lot of style, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But this is the style a lot of people use to uh, comment what the parameters do. And so this says, ah, oh, the parameter friend is the friend's name. And then, of course, you end your multi-line comment. So even if you go no further than this, you've told people uh, the name of the function, the parameters in the function, what the function does, and what each parameter does. So often people will start a, a series of um, functions uh, for our program uh, by just doing the define and the commentary to comment what the function does. And then they'll do all this coding afterward later on. Or they might, a senior programmer might do this uh, def definition and pass the uh, the whole task, including this uh, the file, to a less uh, senior person, and the senior person will take this and and do the the code body for each function. Notice that that, that gives you a capability of um, dividing the work. Once again, we're my friends is a uh, uh, external, so uh, external to these functions. So we're gonna. Declare it as that. Uh, we're going to, we, we are a little verbose here. So we're going to print a little bit at the begin at this function, the name. And now some people like this idea, but they say, gee, when it, when they, in production, I don't want to see this um, verbiage here. So I'm going to make a if debugging or if tracing, uh, you know, do this printing and that way. Uh, you can, at the beginning of your program, set the trace or debug flag of value to true or false and 
therefore you can minimize the code in uh, a production environment, but allow it for uh, in testing environments. I do that a lot. So uh, adding a, a, so we're gonna just print the fact that we're doing this and the option we do for this, uh, which might change. And if we change it, we need only change it in uh, this function, at least for now. Uh, we're going to add by appending, appending is a, a member function of list. So any list you might have, in our case, my friends, you can say, my friends dot append friend and it adds friend to the list. And then in main, and notice at the end of our add one friend, we list the result. So both this and this are sort of not necessary for the actual action, but are useful for uh, tracing of the results. And that's a good practice also. And also you could put uh, a different trace variable for those. So you could have a one that just in one situation only says, oh, I wanna add friends and maybe another more verbose flag could say, oh, and by the way, uh, after uh, each add friend, uh, list the friends. Uh, notice that to do this, we have to have list friends already programmed, already written. And that's one of the reasons why we, I, we use list friends uh, up here at the beginning as the first function we did. And then, okay, down here, we have a, a test add one in the theme of if it's worth coding, it's worth testing. Uh, and notice uh, we do our print, uh, our tracing of the uh, testing. And essentially we just say, okay, my friends, and those we have to have global because if we don't have global here, it's really easy if you ever want to try it out, if you don't have global, my friends, uh, this here will uh, only set a local copy of this variable. And that's not what you want. You want to set this thing, you want to set the uh, my friends that was declared way at the top outside. Oops. Right here, outside the uh, the functions. So uh, here we are. We um, uh, we're going to test add one friends. Um, we do a add one friends Tom, add one friend Joe, and then list the friends. Tom from Miss Jennifer. Okay, ah, so let's let's run this test. Now to do testing at this thing is we we test the list friends we just showed you, and then we test add one friend. So let's just run this. And notice what we have is we have that testing we did the first thing, and then our test add one friend. We add one friend Tom, and the friends become Tom. We add one friend Joe. And notice at the beginning of, because we are verbose, we notice the adding, adding one friends, uh, this listing is as part of the add one friends and this friends is our result of list friends. So by and large, we look like we've tested our single function uh, add one friends. All right, any questions about that? That's a bit much to look at, but it is the sort of thing you may find in this case that you're doing a lot. You, in, this, in our case, we'll just add on to this, but here we have a couple of tools. We have list friends and we have add one friend. Uh, the other uh, functions are essentially testing that we can ensure ourselves without having somebody else. And this is very good if you, if say you are responsible for doing list friends and uh, add one friend, uh, you'll probably want to do some testing to see that you haven't made any mistakes before you handle, or before you hand it off to somebody else or before you involve yourself in yet more programming. Because uh, programming with lots of functions, if you don't have faith in each one, uh, 
you will find yourself uh, in a myriad of trouble soon. And if you hand it off to other people, uh, they will appreciate uh, if you test your functions uh, so that you can have some faith in they being correct. Any questions? Uh, Ray, I have one question. Um, so let's say we do this testing and then uh, when we are at that level to pass it on to the um, next colleague, are we supposed to delete this text uh, language or we just keep well, everything? Well, you, you might, but there's a, there's a better a better approach. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, okay. okay. Yep. sounds good. Any, they're good, good, good question. Uh, yes, uh, uh, at the moment, you probably don't have to even, you could probably pass it off and still not worry, but uh, there's a uh, uh, approach we'll get to, uh, to that helps that uh, building. Any other questions about the uh, ad friend, our friends and uh, our friends one, if you will. If we want to take a look at a little bit further, which we call friends two, Notice this code is all available. If you uh, uh, if you get interested, you should really take a look at it. Um, notice we're gonna we're gonna add more to our our friends. We're gonna do a, one other thing that sort of uh, shows you a little bit more power. Uh, there's often a case in print. If you notice uh, for a function called print, you notice you can print one value, or you can print two values, or you can print you know many values. How do you do that? How does print do that? Well. What you do is you do, when you define the function, instead of just saying uh, a plain vanilla parameter value, you say star and then the name, and that lets Python know that your function, that the function definer, you, wants to consider a list of comma separated parameters as a list. So we'll show you how that's done. Notice a lot of the stuff looks exactly what we had in uh, in the previous add list, add friends. Well, add friend anyway, add one friend. Here's where we're starting anew with uh, friends underscore two. We're gonna define add friends and we're gonna use this star here to say friends going to come in as a comma separated list, just like print has a comma separated list of parameters. And it's going to allow to add zero or more friends. And the zero or more friends are specified here, star friends, or come out as the, when the param, when the user, uh, the caller, he'll say friend, comma, friend, comma, friend, and so on. Here we're going to do a, uh, a print message that just says, uh, we're gonna print add friends, just in uh, quotes to show you that that's what we're doing. And <coughs> we're gonna use a little uh, technique, strings such as quote, comma, quote, have a few member functions, one of which is called join. And when you say quote, comma, quote, or any other string, dot join, what that does is it takes friends as a list and it joins them, it joins them with comma. It's a little tough to make for you, so we'll show you in, in, uh, in how, how, for a moment how it works. And then of course, we're gonna, we're not gonna use, uh, we don't want spaces in between these things. We want them nice and tight. So we're gonna say sep equals, space, space, I quote, quote, in print. And then for the actual, and with all this print stuff here is just uh, for our edification. It doesn't really do the thing we want. What we want to do with that, we're going to take four friends, friend in friends, remember friends is a list, because that's what Star says. He says, um, we're passing us a list. Out, the caller has comma, 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 value, comma, comma, but we're going to see it as a list. And we're going to traverse that list by using our four friend in friends. And then we're going to use our good old function we've just declared above. And so it's just going to be add one friend. 
friends. So it's going to just, so we didn't hardly do anything extra. We just provided ourselves a little uh, expedient function that will going to allow us uh, to add multiple things on the line. So here we are, we're testing. And it's going to, now we've already seen test one add friends. So uh, it was there. So we, we're going to test add friends. And essentially, what we knew is we're going to add friends with Tom, or we're going to add friends with Joe, comma, Mary, comma, Ray. And if we run this, you can see it's our maybe our test here. Or, well, here's our, our test with add friends. So uh, notice it called add one friends because we are verbose about printing that. And the most important thing is the result is. Tom. Now, when we add friends, Joe, Mary, and Ray, notice here's our, our, our sort of uh, verb, verbiage of what we're doing. And notice we took the list and we printed out that by doing this rather uh, clever approach of using uh, comma join friends. So that's just something to give you the capability of uh, making a list into a, a string of uh, value, comma, value, comma, value. And notice here we are when we did add one, add, um, add friends, Joe, Mary, Ray, it of course is gonna call add one friend and it's gonna call add one friend again and it's gonna call add one friend again. And then at the very end, it's going to, the call to friends and our testing is of course going to list all the friends. And at this time you see Tom, which we had added before, and then uh, we add, added these three. So notice very important that when we added these three, somehow, you know, Tom didn't disappear. If you didn't see Tom, Joe, Mary, Ray, then you'd have to say, oh, wait a minute, maybe my, my test shows that my, my function is, is there's a bug in there. There's, it's not working the way, you know, a bug is a, a terminology people have been using in programming for the last, oh, 50, 80 years. Uh, it just essentially means something's not in, in there that's not working the way I expected. So any questions? All right, so that's, that's just, uh, you know, if, uh, our uh, test and now, uh, if we go take a look a little bit more, we're gonna add. And I think we're looking at friends three and mainly um, we're gonna just add a test for contents, if you will, is friend. I Is, is this somebody, and we'll just show you down here, uh, is the extra new thing. It says it's going to define is friend. It's going to have a single value. It's and notice in our commentary, we say exactly what we're doing. And we say, uh, you know, what the parameter does. And we also say that it returns true if possible as a friend. And the way the code works is we just go through my friends and if, possible is equal to any of the friends we have in the list, we return true. If we none, then we return false, not in the list. And um, here's our testing. And notice because we have a couple of things, we have more, but the main thing is we have now a test is friend and a test is friend check. And what the test is friend check is, is just a helper function. Now, I, I'm going to uh, overfly this because I, I like to see, um, and the details are not super important. You should actually, if you uh, take a look and, and, and uh, convince yourself that uh, you can understand this. But uh, the main thing is, uh, and then here's our thing at the end. Here's a little bit of... Uh, Sometimes you have a lot of testing and what you want to do is only uh, do some of the testing. So in this case, we created a, a variable test all and test all is true. Then of course, we're going to test these two 
here, which may have been tested before. And otherwise, we're just going to fall down here and do a test as friend. So if we run this, and essentially, uh, we do a test of friend uh, function. And each time it does a, a test, it calls this test as friend check. But essentially, it says, uh -huh. we set we set up some friends by adding here. Notice how you, you build things. You use some functions like a list from the very beginning. And then when you want to do more, you use add friends. And then when you do more, you use those. So in this case, we added friends and we created Joe, Mary, and Ray. And now we go testing and to say, uh, oh, is, if, if, uh, is Joe a friend? Well, we expected it to. And sure enough, it said it was true. If uh, the test is friend check for Marty, well, we expected it to be false because he wasn't a friend. And so sure enough, we passed our test for testing to see that uh, sure enough, is test, is friend returns false if, uh, you know, that, if you expect it. And then of course we, we do a little last thing here where we say, gee, I wanna see if our testing is working right. So we're gonna do a, a test is friends and we're gonna say, we expect it to be true. We know that's gonna fail and sure enough, it, or we know it should fail and sure enough it does. So we're, we do a little bit of self-test. All right, so that's just a, uh, we built a little bit more. We went quickly over uh, uh, three because we wanted to get to a little bit as somebody suggested, well, what do we do if we're gonna pass this stuff to other people? Uh, to use. And uh, we take a look at uh, what we call friends mod. And what friends mod does is it's sort of, uh, it's, notice it's adapted from friends three. And it does a friends module. Remember we talked about importing from uh, uh, random and such? other people's modules, now you can make your own module. So we do a friends module, which essentially can be used by other programs. And uh, what we do is, now notice this: all this stuff, list and add, all these things are just what we did before. And some of the testing is there, or at least the testing functions. But we come down here to the very big end, and we say, okay, we, want a way to run this program and do testing when we're doing it on our own, but when we pass it to somebody else, we don't want our tests to be run. The code can be there, but we don't want it to be run. So what we do is Python has, and I can never remember exactly how it works. So I usually go cut and paste a previous module that I've done it. And it says, Python has this built-in, often these, it's called double underscore, often called dunder, double underscore main, name, underscore. If this module here is run by itself, and it will be, it, it is the underscore name, underscore, we'll have underscore main, underscore as a value. So if you want this code here, to be run because it's run by itself. For example, here, if we just run module, it runs this thing just as we've seen before, and it runs a check, and it runs this self-test. If you look at the very top, you'll see it printed out self-test. And of course, there's this other special uh, underscore file that allows you to print the actual name of the file that you're running from. Useful sometimes for documentation. And here we are. So here we have a module called friends mod that is nice. It's all come back. Now, how does somebody else use it? Because of course, if they, nobody can use it, then it doesn't really help us that much. Well, if we look at what we call friends four. If we can see friends four here someplace. Ah, friends four. 
this is an example, and all of this is an example of using import to use code functions that we might create. So notice, we're just going to say from friends mod, that's that friends mod.py file that we created, we're going to import, and we're going to import all the functions that it has. Now, we can say add friends, list friends. Notice add friends and list friends are nowhere here. Where are they? They're in friends mod. And we can now call add friends and list friends. And we can go through and call is friends. And if we run it, there we are. So notice that the, the benefit is we've developed a friends module. We developed in pieces like our iteration scheme, but we essentially put in our friends mod. We did another thing. We said, oh, gee, we'd like the testing that we do here. So we're going to, at the end of the file, usually, we're going to put our little test in and say, well, if you run this program by itself, it will do this, this code because it'll have the underscore name underscore will have the name underscore main underscore. And it will allow you to do this testing. So there we are. We have the test fu functions. We are able to run the tests. And when we give it out to somebody else who writes friends for, all, for them to use our code, all they need to do is do a from friends underscore mod import star. And then they can use. And notice when they did that, you didn't, you did, you brought in that file, friends mod, but you didn't execute the test code because that test code, or at least the execution of that test code, was in a piece at the end. If you didn't, if you uh, didn't do, oh, where is our friends mod? If if you if you didn't test for uh, this here, and you just had this code all by itself at the end here, uh, it would uh, like we did in friends three. It would when you when you did a import, it, it would uh, print those. It would do those that testing, which is not what you. You want not what these people wanted to do. They wanted to just use the functions. So any questions about that? We went really quickly. Uh, but I think you get a sense of, uh, even if you don't understand the code itself uh, in detail, you get a sense how you can actually build. And actually, people do build uh, functions that other people can use. And you can too. Uh, by the way, we had a case where we ran in, in I guess, our first session where um, we had a turtle as a module that's useful. But by accident, uh, someone created a uh, file called turtle.py in their local directory. And the import from turtle or from turtle import star got all confused because it used the local copy rather than the actual uh, module copy that is in a different spot, which, which Python will look for if it doesn't find the name of, uh, but in this case, from my uh, import, it will look in the local uh, directory for friendsmod.py uh, and import from there if it's uh, available. Okay, I think we're we're at a point where we're going to do questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we did that. I think I think most of this is sort of uh, some examples that you you can take a look at, but we will we will. Uh, Hold off on that. At least uh, we will uh, call it um, t 
today. And now we will go into our question and answers system, which is uh, we, we want to be sure that we provide a uh, uh, half and a good half an hour for people to ask any and all questions. And that can be from everything we did here to <clears throat> things that we we've done in the before or anything in, in, in between. But we want to be sure that uh, we provide. Uh, notice we, we do have some uh, have homework for, uh, found in the, the homework directory. Uh, if you find yourself behind, don't feel uh, like you've lose, uh, missing stuff. If you uh, feel like you uh, need to go back and look at the homework for the session one and session two, uh, they're good homework uh, problems. And uh, you might find that uh, they were more difficult uh, the last time you looked and they might be easier to, uh, to try now. So uh, feel free to uh, you know, attack those uh, problems or look at the solutions, even if you don't get a chance to, to do the problems. Same thing here for our, our homework uh, for uh, uh, session three, the friends. And, uh, you know, try them. I thought they were fun. So uh, give me a shot. So uh, we're at question and answer period. Any any questions? Now's your chance. No. Any Python. So don't forget, I should un unmute just in case because I don't, I, uh, don't hear anybody. I have a feeling that some people might have some questions here that they feel that don't warrant uh, asking. Well, they weren't asking uh, because if they're questions to you, um, they're going to be questions to others, and then don't feel like uh, uh, you know, quote, I should have known this, so I, I I can't ask the question. No, no. If 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 there's some Python issue, programming issue, uh, things we put up, things we haven't put up, uh, that are uh, questions, you should ask because you're going to do uh, you and others uh, a good stead because. By and large, if there are questions to you, there are probably at least one or two others that would have asked it. Sure, there are no questions. Okay, uh, you, you have your chance now, well, going once. Well, try if you can, if you have any questions, uh, um, feel, you know, feel encouraged to uh, uh, email me if you want me to look at any homework problems, let me know. Uh, I'll be glad to do it. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think, uh, to what extent you can do a little bit, I think you'll you'll get some uh, benefit. And I've always had occasion when I've actually made something work, uh, feeling uh, good about it.
Laura? Yep, I'm here. I, I think I think uh, we've uh, exhausted everybody. <laughs> Let me go ahead and stop.